Ahoy hoy, I'm Planet Walk, and today we are on to pseudoscientist number one of the 12 pseudoscientists of Christmas. Now, of course, last year the spot went to Nigel Cheesy Hands, but who's it going to this year? Well, the answer is, of course, Mikey Smith. Anyway, that does mean that I have to make a video about him now, and I actually came across a very interesting video that he made about trucks. Hey guys, I just wanted to make this note again for the people that do not understand things and always opinionate everything and uh, without any facts. I always just go with theories and repeat what they've been told or think. Yeah, it does make sense that you'd have to repeat things for Flat Earthers. Even if the Flat Earthers agree with what you're saying, you still have to repeat things to them. You'd think by now that Flat Earthers would have figured out that they can just replay videos, but apparently they haven't. So, again with the people who own trucks or half tons, tunnel covers or bed covers are doing absolutely nothing for you for fuel economy. If you think you're getting better fuel economy with your truck bed cover, you're wrong. Hey, Mikey, you know you can search things up and you'd find out that in this case, you are the one that's wrong. Although, in every case, you seem to be the one that's wrong. When I googled it, everything that I could find suggests that it does improve fuel economy. Even Mythbusters tested it, and what they found is that, yeah, it does improve fuel economy. The truck in the factory was designed in a wind tunnel to be efficient with the tailgate up. Okay, so I'm not sure if I'm reading this right, but I don't think it's drawing there is accurate to what tailgate up means. Tailgate up means that it's just vertical. It doesn't mean that you've lifted it up somehow. At least to me, that's what it looks like his drawing is showing. I might be wrong. To be efficient with the tailgate up. Not with a cover over the top. Just because they designed their fuel efficiency for use without a cover doesn't mean that putting a cover on it isn't going to make it more fuel efficient. It is designed for general use and a lot of people don't use covers because, well, covers can make things a little bit more annoying. If we're being honest, the people that probably would benefit from having a cover on their pickup truck are the people that probably don't actually need a pickup truck. And what I mean by that is that there's a lot of people out there that buy a pickup truck just in case they need it but they never actually need it for anything more than general vehicle use. This is a largely American problem though, but there are a few other factors that go into it as well. When you have a cover over the top, the airflow gets disturbed, okay? It makes you to get worse fuel economy. These are the facts. Okay, apparently it is a fact. <laughs> that having a cover on your pickup truck makes you to get worse airflow. <laughs> anyway, ignoring the fact that he was having trouble sentencing, the opposite is true. Having a cover actually reduces drag. There is no study that I can find that suggests the opposite. The only argument that you can really make here is that the fuel efficiency gains are very minimal. Not theories or my opinion, these are the facts. Well, no, you are just wrong here. Therefore, this is not the facts. So when you're driving down the highway with a normal truck, the air starts to re create a vortex and then the rest of the air flows over the truck nice and calmly, giving you better fuel economy, okay? Please do the research and get rid of your truck bed covers, making the airflow disturbed. Well, no, considering the way that people actually drive with the tailgate up, that disturbed airflow that you're pointing to, if that were actually a thing, would be present even when people drive with their tailgate up. The difference is, is that if you've got a truck bed, then none of the air flowing over it would get caught on the tailgate. Okay, and if you are getting only two tires, and you want to put the two brand new tires on the front, that is the worst decision you can ever make of your life. You are going to create an accident for yourself. Always put the new tires on the back. Well, this one here is actually generally correct, given that you're just buying two tires for your vehicle. And if you specifically need to replace the front tires, well, you can always put the new tires on the back and move the back tires to the front. Though, to be fair, if your back tires are in pretty good condition, then it may not really be worth the effort. Though, I don't really need to worry about this because I just take public transport everywhere. 
It's cheaper than owning a vehicle, to be honest. At least where I am. A lot of places in America have made people dependent on their own personal vehicles, so that is a topic for another video. If you know of anywhere I can find videos of people whining about 15 minute cities, send it to me and I'll make videos on them. Research the facts. I don't do opinions or theories. Thank you, have a great day. Well, no, you clearly haven't researched the facts yourself. Some of this was just your opinion. With your first claim, I was easily able to find out that you're wrong with that. And you know, I don't have a vehicle. I'm not an expert on vehicles. This is just freely available information out there. Just because someone claims to adhere to facts, that doesn't mean that they are. A lot of flat earthers do this, but it's not just a problem that I find with flat earthers. It's a problem that a lot of people have. Anyway, let's go over another video by Mikey Smith because it would be a very underwhelming end to the series if I finished with that. All right, people, time to put your thinking caps on. Uh, for those of you who are having trouble with directions, um, directions, what do you mean when you say you're going up to Montana when you live in California. Okay, going up to Montana from California. That's kind of weird because you should be going down to Montana from California. Everybody should know by now that South is clearly up. But a reason why a lot of people say it that way is probably due to the way that a lot of maps are orientated. For some reason, there are a lot of maps out there that have North pointing up. I have no idea why. Please explain that to me. What do you mean, whether you're a globey or a flat earther or a truther? What do you mean when you're going up or down to a destination when you are driving? It generally means that you're going north or south. Now, sometimes it may mean that you're going up into the mountains. That is a way that some people use it. But most people generally use it in reference to north and south. And look, this isn't hard stuff to figure out. You should be able to easily work it out on your own. The clouds are up and the ground is down. In my world. In your world, you need to explain to me what is up and down. Well, up generally refers to things that are further away from the earth, and down generally refers to things that are closer to the earth. However, language is not this thing that is rigidly set in place, so people are free to use words in different ways if they wish. Because in the globy world, there are supposedly two ups and two downs. No, just different ways that people use it. I use up to refer to south. That doesn't mean that there's now three ups. And here's actually a fun little tidbit that people may not understand. In the flat world, there are seven ups. And the globies, you need to stop saying sea level. Why? Sea level is a thing that exists, and the Earth is a globe. There's nothing wrong with this. Also, Mikey, I do want to ask, are you okay? Your voice doesn't quite sound right. You think you live on a ball or a sphere with spherical water on it bending. The oceans, the seas are not level in your world. Yes, they are. Level just means having no part that is higher than another. Now, on a globe, this does mean with respect to sea level, which may sound circular, but there is a good reason for it. And it's because the Earth bulges at the equator. If we were to try and take it from the center of the Earth, things wouldn't quite work out as well. You need to say sea curve. Curvizen. No, we don't, because level doesn't necessarily mean flat. Just like there's nothing about the word horizon that indicates that you can't use it on a globe. That's just something that flat earthers have made up. Get it through your tiny skulls that the earth is motionless. Look, I've explained it time and time and time and time again. There are things that wouldn't work if the Earth were stationary. But what we found is, is when we turned on that gyroscope, we found that we were picking up a drift. A 15 degree per hour drift. Thanks, Bob. Water cannot contain itself. Look, buddy, I don't know what kind of drugs you're on, but when the water starts laughing at you, you know you have a problem then. Water is formless. Okay, remember, water, when, 
at rest, let's say it together, Globies, when at rest does not bend or curve. And we understand what you mean by a raindrop or on the top of a glass. That's water tension. But do you understand what we mean when we say tides? Tide comes in, tide goes out. Flat earthers can't explain that. The fact that tides vary means that water does bend, as flat earthers say, even if the earth is flat. In reality, water conforms to the forces that are acting upon it. I have been saying this for years now, and no flat earther ever listens. Okay. Uh, 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 uh. Ding, 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 ding. Look, Mikey, I wouldn't do that if I were you. You seem to have a dangerously low number of brain cells, and that ain't gonna help you. Time to wake up, boys and girls. Hey, Globies, we're still waiting for you to provide proof of a curve. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Oh, oh, SpaghettiOs. Well, there is plenty of evidence of a curve like the evidence that I'm showing on screen right now, for example. The problem with Flat Earthers, though, is that they tend not to acknowledge this. I have shown Flat Earthers this evidence before, and they have acknowledged none of it, and still say there's no evidence for a curve. Anyway, I hope you have enjoyed today's video, because we're still not done yet. That's right, let's go through another Mikey Smith video. Alright guys, just showing uh, the sun setting here, going further away. As you can see as I go from right to left, or left to right, whichever, what's happening with that cloud? I don't know, Mikey, what is happening with that cloud? I didn't know that there was something going on with the cloud. You better tell us. And the hot spot that the sun is producing. On top of the cloud. Hmm. Well, that is a specular highlight from the sun. I think what Mikey is trying to say is that the sun is just above the clouds over there. However, that cannot be the case. The reason being is because if the Earth is flat and it's near sunset, that sun would have to be extremely far away. Like, thousands of kilometers far away. You would not be able to see clouds that are thousands of kilometers away. So this can't be a highlight that is being caused by the sun being just above the clouds. Globies, time to ask questions. Or just make rude comments, whatever you decide. Remember, rude comments do not provide proof that you live on a globe. Okay, why would the sun be producing a hotspot if it has to be thousands of kilometers away at this point? I don't think he's going to answer. Okay, well, let's try a different one then. Why would you post a video saying, oh, this can't happen on a globe, when the thing that it would be doing on a globe is the exact same thing that it would be doing on a flat Earth? I don't think he's going to answer that one either. Okay, let's try one last one. Mikey, are you actually going to answer any of my questions? I take that as a no. Hmm. Local sun, not 93 million miles away. It's not hard to figure out, folks. Well, trying to use that video as evidence that the sun is not 150 million kilometers away and is instead a local sun, it raises more questions than it answers. And it doesn't answer any. Hmm. Yeah, good luck, Globies. Good luck. I don't really need any luck, buddy. I would say good luck to you, but I doubt you're going to even acknowledge the existence of this here video. But that is something that I've noticed with Flat Earthers. They'll say, ah, no Globie can explain this. And then someone will make a video explaining this, and they'll just ignore that video and claim, no Globie can explain this. But who knows, maybe Mikey will see this video and actually try to answer the questions that I've asked. I mean, I'm doubtful, but there is the possibility. And because of that, I guess I probably shouldn't overwhelm Mikey by responding to too many of his videos. So this is where we're actually going to end it. Anyway, this series has been fun. It was a little bit more difficult to get it done this year because 
there are circumstances that have made it a little bit more difficult for me to make these videos to just record videos in general actually. Next year I will be changing up how I select who I respond to in this series. I was going to change it up this year but that would have meant that I would have had to respond to Nathan Oakley again and I don't want to do that so I kept it the same as last year. Though to be fair I don't think people really actually know how I select the people that I do for the series. It's not just me going ah I think this person will be fun to respond to. There's a bit of an algorithm to it. I may also rename it to the 12 derps of Christmas next year. That depends though if people want me to actually change it to the 12 derps because people might just want me to keep it as it is. Anyway there is a lot that I want to do next year. Hopefully things go better next year than it did this year. There are a few barriers that stop me from doing as much as I would have liked to this year. But anyway, leave a like and subscribe if you like this video. Leave a comment letting me know what you've thought. I will see you in the next year. Between you and me, happy holidays.